Good afternoon, my friends. This is the Grim Flare. I hope you're doing very well today. Welcome to another Modern Donation League. This one is for Selesnia Company, Selesnia Value Town, perhaps Reclaimer Company. Whatever you'd like to call it, we are a Collected Company deck that is absolutely jam-packed full of value. And we are kind of like a lands deck in a way as well, because we can kill with Valakut the Molten Pinnacle in conjunction with the Dryad of the Elysian Grove, in addition to having unholy amounts of synergy and value with our land base as a whole relative to our creature suite. So, just a quick uh, technical note before I get into the deck tech. We are, the sec this is our second league with a new computer. The first league, the, the Jun Shadow League, I just did with a primitive screen grabber, basically just to get something recorded for you. Uh, for the second one, I have set up OBS, but I'm not still very much an expert with OBS. I've got pretty basic settings. So you guys let me know how we're sounding, how we're sounding and how we're looking. I think you'll be able to see the taskbar here and maybe the very top. That's maybe not ideal. We can, we can work on that maybe for the next video or as time goes on. But for now, I'm just trying to record a league with my new PC with OBS. Hopefully things go off relatively without a hitch. But yeah, any feedback on those fronts, I would be happy to take on board. So uh, with that said, let's talk about our list. This comes to us from Tarragon. Tarragon is a long-term confidant to your supporter. Thank you, Tarragon, so much. And uh, Tarragon had a couple ideas, a few ideas kicking around for the DL um, that was earned recently. One of them was Yorian Death and Taxes, but in my recent AMA, I kind of dunked on the Yorian decks a little bit uh, as one of my more hated archetypes, and Tarragon kind of rescinded that idea, said, well, maybe Yorian is not for us, right? And True. Yeah, not my not my very favorite thing. I would play it, but, you know, not top of my list. Number two option was yet another Jun Shadow variant. Now, this one was really cool. It had Dreadhorde Arcanist, and it was a brew, and it went 5-0. and oh. um, I think Terragon's friend went 5-0 and oh with it, and I said I'm very happy to play this, just so you know. Uh, two of my other upcoming leagues are also Jun Shadow. So Tarragon said, well, never mind that. Let's play the Selesnia list instead. So guys, I got to tell you, this is a little bit out of my wheelhouse. I don't, I'm not necessarily going to play like an expert. I've played exactly one tournament practice lobby game with this, and I did a lot of cool things with it. It's got a million decision points, and it's got a lot of proactive power, right? So hopefully, to the extent that I'm not an expert, it won't end up mattering too much. And uh, either way, we're going to have lots of fun. But this is um, this is a mid-range deck, right? But it's not black-based mid-range. I've always kind of had a little bit of antipathy against non-black mid-range decks, because to me, they... They gain an advantage in grinding power and consistency at the expense of interaction. Generally, I think that's a good principle. If you're not playing discard spells and fatal push, you're playing other things in their stead that are not as good generally at disrupting and that are better at grinding or better at doing something busted. So I've always felt like black based is the good guy mid-range. The non-black mid-range, maybe not quite so much, but... Skyclave Apparition admittedly has changed this a lot because this is a main deck, very flexible piece of interaction that does not require you to play non-creature spells, that does not require you to deviate from the plan. In fact, it is right along the plan you're able to power it out turn two off of Noble Hierarch and Birds of Paradise. You're able to find it off of Collected Company. So this gives so many strategies a new lease on life, and this Celestia Company deck is certainly one of them. But we're not really trying to Skyclave Apparition our way to victory every game. It's just like a good good, on-plan, interactive piece. Perhaps the core of the deck is more like Dryad of Elysian Grove and Valakut the Molten Pinnacle, which while we're going off with Value Town type of turns, we have 26 lands, we're going to make a ton of land drops, where we are able to kill the opponents most of the time probably with Dryad on the field and a Valakut just making land drops, controlling their board, eventually going upstairs with the Valakuts, right? Very, very cool stuff. We also have Elvish Reclaimer, which can not only tutor up Valakut, it also synergizes marvelously with Flagstones of Trocar, allowing us both card selection and card advantage and ramp all in the same package. And Reclaimer also can very easily become a one-mana 3-4 if we're going on the beatdown plan in this deck. I'll jump ahead to Knight of the Reliquary, who's very similar to Reclaimer in that it can be an undercosted beater. You know, she can be 6-6, six, 7-7, six, seven, seven, no problem. And she also tutors up Valakit or tutors up other things, right? And all of these lands entering the graveyard and then subsequently entering the battlefield. We know how 
good they are with flagstones, with Valakut, alongside Dryad, Reclaimer, and Knight. But there's all kinds of other stuff going on, too. We've got two copies of Ramanop Excavator, being, letting us just play those lands right back from the graveyard if we don't have more in hand. We've got two Corsair of Crufix, allowing us to play lands from the top of the deck. Now, all of these different ways to make lands enter the battlefield means we have three Tireless Tracker that can go absolutely nuts on the back of all of these land drops, right? And as I mentioned, we also have four copies of Collected Company, allowing us to have instant speed, you know, combat tricks, instant speed overloads of permission on end steps and just another source of really good tempo and advantage a lot of the time. Uh, we also have two copies of Scoos, and granted we're not really putting much directly into the opponent's graveyard, but we are ramping, and we'll be able to really sink mana into Scoos should we need to. And uh, we just round out the deck basically with two birds and four Noble Hierarch for more traditional forms of ramp. Taking a look at the land base, two Valakit, four Flagstones, these are the core of the overpowered synergy, but there's more utility. We've got Gavany Township for Go Wide Beatdown, we've got two copies of Ghost Quarter to disrupt the opposing big mana. We can Ghost Quarter and Ramanop Excavator if uncontested the opponent completely out of the game. And we can even Ghost Quarter ourselves for more land drops for everything that we mentioned. We've also got a Horizon Canopy as Flood Insurance. You can also loop that with Excavator. We are a 26 land deck. We want a lot of lands, but a Canopy here is really nice. We've got four Windswept Heath, one each of three other the three other green fetch lands for diversity and also just to make sure that we're fetching our forests a lot of the time because we want to leave planes in the deck for the flagstone synergy all else being equal but we've got four forests two planes beautiful odyssey printings i might add in three copies of temple garden i will also add this entire thing as tarragon's list because i don't know what i'm doing with a deck like this so i didn't offer any suggestions and i'm just running with it as is sideboard four copies of path to exile very hard removal when we need it three copies of auric champion she's main deckable right now we definitely got to have her in the 75 uh, two copies of Night of Autumn, very powerful utility uh, on a body, basically a lot like a lot like what our deck wants to do in general. Avon Mind Sensor, same deal. We're hating out search effects, and it is a flash evasive beatdown body. Uh, we have some one of mostly creatures rounding out the sideboard, Phyrexian Revoker for when we need to shut off certain activated abilities. Archon of Ameria, kind of a death and taxes, hate bear style card. Good against the decks trying to cast multiple spells per turn. Some good tempo, more evasion. Um, Eidolon of Rhetoric, even more of a hate card against prowess and spell-based combo, I guess. And Deicide, uh, anti-Heliod, anti-Clothis tech. There you go, my friends. Thank you once again to Tarragon. Uh, forgive me in advance if I don't play expertly. I'm very new to this type of strategy, but we're going to have some fun. Let's get into some games. All right, we are against the Raven, who says, well, this is an honor. I watch your videos all the time. I'll say good luck, have fun, my friend. And we can definitely keep this hand. We also might be at an advantage here because OP will think we're on BGX, right? Because that's what I do. So hopefully we can leverage that into some advantage. And also, um, hopefully we have a good game against the Raven. Quoth the Raven, well, this is an honor. Pretty cool stuff. I love to hear from viewers. Thank you, The Raven, and good luck to you. So, all right, we have Reclaimer into Flagstones for immediate ramp as long as we don't lose our Reclaimer, but it looks like we might here because, oh, no, okay, I guess not. Unless opponent will remove on upkeep, but nope. So... Let me make sure I know what I'm doing with this deck. So we're going to pay two and tap sack a land to search for a land, and then flagstones will get us a planes as well. So there's the combo. There's the wombo combo. I guess there's no reason to do it right now, right? We'll do it on the opponent's turn or in response to removal. I wonder if we're against Boomer Rock or maybe Jund, because there's no Luris, but there's an overgrown tomb. Uh, 
All right, so we're probably just cocoing next turn, so I I don't know that we need to get anything in particular. Maybe I'll just get another flagstones to allow us to keep um, pulling way ahead on lands for now. We found Gavany Township, huh? Yeah, so I'm not sure we can reclaim her for another land drop and play another Reclaimer, but I think we're probably supposed to go for a Collected Company here. So I'm just going to say go. I'm not too... Well, I was going to say I'm not too worried about this... Uh, the opponent's life total. Maybe we should still be attacking, but I think if we attack and do nothing, we're just guaranteeing that we're casting Collected Company, right? So, why don't we just hold back, give ourselves the most options. We're bluffing a little bit this way. This might be just Jund about to play Liliana. Indeed. Well, Coco in response, hope for a good hit. If we find a Dork, we'll ditch it. But instead we find Dryad and Tireless Tracker. So... Because we have another uh, Reclaimer in hand, I think I'm just going to err on the side of all this value here. And lose our Reclaimer to the Lily. Now we get to untap and go completely nuts with Dryad plus Tracker. We draw Flagstones as well. So we can play one Flagstones, lose the other one. I don't know if we're even really supposed to worry about that. I think maybe we'll just play a Ghost Quarter and crack a clue, see what we find before we do anything else. But certainly against Jund, we want as many clues as possible. Before they find an answer to Tracker. There's a Collected Company. <laughs> Okay. I think maybe we're supposed to main phase this Coco. So why don't we do it by casting flags or by deploying flagstones? Sorry, there's so many lines I'm just not used to here. Okay, we'll keep the untapped one. This is a little nuts, not going to lie. We're going completely crazy against Jund right now. And we find eh, a bit of a weak Coco, but we'll take a Hierarch and a Scooz, I guess. So now we get to finish off Lily and attack the Raven. Now, we're pretty punished, I think, for Cocoing because now Tracker can be bolted and our Coco is relatively weak. Nevertheless, we have acquired so much value, it doesn't really matter. But the way that Coco went, it might have been better to do other things with our turn, like crack another clue, see what we can see, right? But I'm going to Blood Braid into a Goyf, sure. <clears throat> so we can control the Goyf pretty well with Skews, if that's what we need to do. We can also just Apparition it right now. Um also got Gavany Township. Many things going our way. I'm going to begin by just once again cracking a clue here, though. All right, Windswept Heath. I guess we're going nuts mode with Tracker yet again. I think apparitioning the Goyf is fine here. There's only one creature in the bin, so the Scoo's attack is not free, but we still should probably make it. Let me 
Maybe we'll crack a clue first. Eh, whatever. We don't really need... It doesn't matter what we do. I'll try not to tank too much on decisions that don't matter for your sake, the viewer, as well as for our opponent's sake. And I guess we'll just fully style here, right? Well, why not? Just to really show what the deck can do. OP's at four. I don't think Jund has a way to come back. But OP might try another Bloodbraid Elf here or something if they've got it. Which you think they might, because, you know, it's it's Jund and they didn't have really kill spells or discard, right? So they've got to have a value pack top end. We know they did with Lily into Bloodbraid, and there's likely more where that came from. But surely to have any kind of a chance, opponent will be, you know, having to remove a couple things and then Scooze gets better. We've got Gavany Township, which rewards us for going as wide as we did last turn. Reclaimer is a 1 mana 3 4. We're going to get over the line unless they're main decking damnation. It's just a matter of what the opponent does before then and then, therefore, what we end up doing. But, uh,. Funny thing is, even with Damnation, we could still very easily come back. We've got three clues on the field, right? But they don't have it. And there's the concession. GG. GG, well played. All right, I mean, that's kind of an example of exactly what I was talking about, right? In the deck tech with... Bon wants to know if we're recording. Yep, round one. Um, so against Jond, against Jond, I don't think there is actually a, a huge amount that I want. Um, you could play some number of path, but it's not necessary. Revoker <coughs> has text for sure. Has a lot of text, actually. But it dies to everything. Crucially, we're dying to the Ren Ping with that. Probably not what we want. Um, Mind Sensor is kind of cute, but probably not. Hemeria getting bolted. So we're basically looking at cards like Path to Exile and Oriac Champion, which I think are both okay. I don't think we want seven cards out, though. So what don't we like as much against Jund? And the thing is, every one of these top-end cards is good. Scavenging Ooze is good. So I'm going to probably cut Dorks, cut a couple Birds... Uh, play a couple champions, cut a hierarch for a path, um, and then maybe another hierarch for another champion. Um, I don't know exactly how much we want to cheat away from ramp, but the dorks are bad top decks and they die. OP's in round five, uh, playing for the cash league. They're two and two. Um... I don't have the experience with this deck to say whether we can trim lands and mid-range mirrors or not. It would probably just be one. Um, could we maybe trim a fetch land and get away with it? Sure. Um, I just don't know if we should. So I'm just going to submit. When in doubt, I'll be conservative with my sideboarding. <clears throat> <clears throat> Hand looks totally fine to me. We're rewarded uh, by having a dork in the opener, even though we sided most of them out. That's great. Now it's Jund on the play, keeping seven. They could definitely like discard us T1, kill our dork T2, take over T3, right? And indeed, they have Thoughtseize right here. So <clears throat> the bad thing is we only have three spells in hand relative to an interactive deck. That's not a huge amount of density. However... Um, 
we do like our land drops can just win the game too, right? So we need to make land drops no matter whether they're thought seizing us or not. And down goes Collected Company, just getting that right out of the way, T1. Um, I'm going to play my Noble Hierarch here. I'm sure it will die. But here you go. Tireless Tracker, a fine draw. It's just another thing that we can leverage here on the value axis. <clears throat> I have to say, I'm very pleased with my own selection of basic lands here. We have the glorious Alan Pollock basic planes and the gorgeous Larry Elmore basic forest, both from Odyssey, both matching one another pretty well with the same type of, um, type of vibe and also suiting the deck down to the ground, if you ask me. So the nightmare here is Renping. Um, that's always a risk out of Jund on the play uh, when you're playing any kind of X1 creatures, right? But they don't have Ren. That's good. Inquisition's bad news for us. No doubt about it. Um, if they have, like, a kill spell here that they don't want to use on the Dork or maybe that they... Oh, interesting. Okay, so I don't, don't think they have a kill spell unless they bolt the Dork right now. Okay. Because then they would have given us attention, do we, do we not play Tracker, right? We have another Dryad. Opponent's play is rewarded, I suppose. So something that'd be great for us is if the opponent, like, trophies our Dryad, right? That will ramp us. We've got a backup one in hand as long as they don't have a third discard spell to lead on. Um, then that would be a good outcome. OP with a Goyf and no third land. Okay. This is good news for us. Let's see what we can do with it. We have found Courser of Crufix. That's a good find. And we get a planes right off the top. That's another good find. Value Town. Value Town. And we've got a planes in hand. And we get to play it. And we get to use these to make green. I feel like I'm just completely cheating, basically, here. But uh, there you go, OP. There's our, <laughs> there's our turn. Now the opponent's in some trouble because we make they have to remove both dryads in order for our land drops to not start getting nuts. We also have Skyclave Apparition just visibly coming off the top to take care of their goif and start turning our, our army of two fours sideways. And uh, both of those things are bad news for OP. They're also stuck on two lands, it seems. Although, obviously, the draw step can yield anything. But, uh... You yeah, know, opponent with, with some good stuff. You understand, yeah, Obviously, you keep plenty of two-landers with BGX. If they didn't ever draw the third, that's just unlucky. You certainly keep uh, Thought Seize, Inquisition, Goyf as a baseline. There's no doubt of that. Another Goyf. Okay. Well, that'll do, that'll do a lot. <clears throat> if we, I think if we draw a Fetch Land off the top, we can double bolt. One of the Goyfs and Apparition the other, if I'm not mistaken with how my own deck works. Ooh, OP gonna attack. I'm taking that hit for sure. It means we can crack back aggressively even if we don't draw anything good off the top. I mean, don't show a land off the top, basically, with Courser. We do, it's Ghost Quarter. That, I think, does it, right? So we can GQ... We can bolt that goif. And then we can GQ our own flagstones. Tutor up a land. Tutor up two lands, actually. Oh my goodness, this is <laughs> insane. And completely wreck their goif. All right, 
So this Valica tags finishes off the Goyf. We're gaining all the life back that OP did with the Tarmogoyf attack. And then we get to Apparition, this other one. Oh my good god. What have I become, my friends? What have I become? Oh, hold on. I hope I'm not auto, uh, turn off auto yields. I might have another land drop to make as well off the top, which is just silly after that shuffle. We do. <laughs> okay. Sure, you're at six. I'm, I don't think I'm missing anything either, but... We got Ramanop Excavator in case all this wasn't enough. We can keep buying lands back from the graveyard. Okay, OP makes the third land drop. Bantu's Last Reckoning might be the best card they could have. <laughs> Oh boy, I feel so bad doing this to Jun. We've had good progressions, but it's also just, as far as I can tell, relatively normal. Ooh, Maelstrom Pulse. A nice one. A nice one. But we have the lethal on board. And opponent says GG's friend. All right, that was a pretty easy round one win. The only... The only reason it didn't feel as easy as it was is because it was my first time ever playing the deck. Second time, if you count my one tournament practice lobby game. Um, we had relatively straightforward lines, I think, relative to what this deck can offer us, and we just completely and totally, sadly, went over the top of what a BGX midrange deck tends to do. So, ooh, bittersweet, bittersweet moment. But we love this round one win. See you for round two. Another great hand on the play. Absolute guaranteed keep. I don't know if we're supposed to go Reclaimer or Hierarch T1, because if we go Reclaimer T1, we can go Flagstones, Ramp T2. Um, if we go Hierarch T1, we can potentially protect the Reclaimer from rem removal, if that matters, or also just power out Dryad earlier. I actually don't know which is better in the blind. Not going to lie. Um, I think I'm just going to play Noble Hierarch, but I'm not, uh, again, not certain that I'm supposed to. I think this gives us the most options, um, including what we could potentially draw off the top. And it's also the most traditional like line of play. Like People have been playing turn one dorks since time immemorial, right? Oh, we're against elves, elvish mystic, got it. This could be a tough one. Um, we gotta find some well-timed apparitions, otherwise, you know, who knows what could happen, right? But, Huh, this is awkward. Um, maybe I maybe I should have seen this. Maybe there's nothing I could do about it. But we have two white lands in hand, which is bad specifically because we can't go Dryad and it'll land into Reclaimer. So with that in mind, are we supposed to play Knight? I'm not sure. Once again, not really sure. So I don't know exactly how much Dryad is doing for us at the moment, but in conjunction with a good find off of Collected Company, it could be kind of wild. I guess I'm playing Knight, but... Yeah, really not sure. Turn 2 Knight against a non-interactive deck, though, is definitely something. Thankfully, we're on the play, right? That's huge, given this matchup. Again, we want to find Apparitions. Um... Opponent with a War Master into a Dork? Into Heritage Druid? Oh, the Nightmare. The Nightmare begins. All right, Elf Ball time. Let's see what they've got. Yeah, that was nice. That was real nice. They're probably happy to see our deck, too. Hey, you know, it, it looked really lopsided against Jund, but the opponent would be really sweating it out if we were Jund right now. So, okay, they've got Archie. So I think we pretty much have to Coco trying to find uh, Apparition. We found Valakit. It's a good one to have, I guess. No doubt it's a good one to have, but I'm just going to main phase a Coco, see what we can see here. 
<clears throat> we can see Courser of Crufix, good blocker here. Ramanop Excavator, a nice one. Elvish Reclaimer, also a nice one, frankly, even though we haven't gotten our first one down yet. Um, I think we got to take Courser and Excavator to try to go on the Value Town plan, stay alive, and control their board with Valakut, right? Now, what does Knight do for us? <clears throat> We can manipulate the top deck of our library a little bit. But we can also sit back and offer some interesting blocks. Um, or we can attack Exalted. I think I'm sitting back here. We can become a 5-5 five -five at instant speed by tutoring a fetch land, right? All right, let's sit back. We probably want to shuffle that tracker away. It's not this, uh, not the value game that we need to be playing at this stage. Pendlehaven. Higher Pendlehaven does nothing with a lord. Bad deck building. Kidding, kidding, kidding. It's good deck building. I love elves. They are awesome. All right. Visionary into Warmaster trigger is some insane value. What do we have to deal with an Elves deck in the sideboard? Not much. Revoker has a little text. Um, Path to Exile is removal, but... Uh, <laughs> ramping the Elves, also not our very best idea, perhaps. We just gotta fade... Um, oh my, yeah, the Elvish Warmaster activated ability... And they have a collected company. So they've got seven floating. I guess we need them to kind of break off Coco. They don't. But at least it's not like a Dwinan's Elite, so they can activate these three again. Hmm. Ah, <sighs> so I wonder, you know... We're, we're definitely just as slow, not that we're slow in a vacuum, but we're slow in the context of fighting against elves. Oh, opponent with another Archdruid? Good God. But we'd definitely be about as slow, I think, if we let on a Reclaimer here. Yeah, I mean, we just basically needed to find a Skyclave Apparition off of that... Uh, ...collected company. Okay, so if we take the whole hit, we're dead. We got to block something. I think blocking maybe Heritage Druid with Knight and then growing so it's a trade is the best option here. Double blocking is bad in the face of Death Touch, right? So I guess we're just supposed to get a fetch land here like planned. Another knight on top. I'm happy to shuffle that away. Gaining a little life, but opponent's swing is so huge here, it's probably just going to be way too much for us. Even if we get Valakut online. Another Dryad off the top. Not really what we need. So we already had one in hand, right? Um, so I think OP just definitely has us. If this Valak had entered, well... Let's just play it up.
let's just take some action and show that we can style a little bit too here, right? Now with this dryad, we get to play the Valakut out of hand. We get to kill that Archie. And we've gained some life. And that's it. Now it's up to the opponent to figure out if they can kill us this turn. Um, they have another Archdruid, so I, I guess they just can with Warmaster. Um, but... It's pretty much what the Elves are expected to do, I guess, against a deck without many kill spells. That's also not really faster than them. So, hey, we're getting policed by Elves. You do love to see that, in a way. All right, so we can only take one hit. <laughs> Not a good sign for us living here. Okay, that activation doesn't change anything because we can still only take one hit. So one, two, three, four, we're dead. All right. All right, Elf Ball, I see you. So Eidolon of Rhetoric's actually not bad. We want to play some number of path, I'm sure. Phyrexian Revoker again has text. Um, maybe Archon is as good or better than Eidolon, and maybe we want both. These things are symmetrical, though. They definitely can slow us down, too. As you've seen, we can certainly have some go-off turns that involve multi-spelling, right? But I think at the end of the day, we do probably want those. And then he could just play Oriac Champion. Might be better than some bad stuff if we have enough bad stuff. Just because the incidental life gain is going to be significant. I'll put her over here. Um, but certainly, I don't think we're sideboarding this heavily. But I think we can remove Tireless Tracker from the equation. Um, maybe Scavenging Ooze too. Like, it gains life, but neither card is really putting, or neither deck is really putting cards into the graveyard, right? So maybe I'm going to cut the scoozes. I could live to regret that. I think we need to leave all of our ramp in. I think we like Dryad, Skyclave, Corsair Excavator, Knight. I could see trimming a little bit from this category. We have five slots to bring in right now. What if we just play Four Path plus Eidolon and Archon? These cards do kind of work well together. Like they can't, if we have one of these, they can't use the Path ramp as well. That's something. Maybe we'll cut one each of S Excavator and Corsair to play a single Oriac Champion, or do we not even want her? Maybe we don't even want her. I'll just play the Corsair for the life gain and the um, staying committed to the value town plan. Feel free, feel free to share your thoughts on sideboarding. I definitely don't know exactly what I'm doing here. Uh, this is a mega tilt because this hand is awesome. It's just got Ramp, Flagstones, Reclaimer, Dryad, Valakut, but we don't have a green source, so I guess we have to probably mull. Um, yeah, that's really frustrating, but we've got to send it back. Okay, we still have Reclaimer and Flagstones. This one has an Apparition. It is a keep. And I think the responsible thing to do is probably just a bottom courser here, but it would be an, a fine seven to keep if we could. All right, so I guess ideally here, I mean, opponent kept seven, so we can't realistically hope for them to stumble. Ideally, we go turn two, Reclaimer, Ramp with Flagstones, turn three, Apparition, their Archdruid, if that's indeed their play, and then turn four, we start going completely nuts. So 
So what land do we want to get here? Do we just like get a Valakut down, get that out of the way? Or do we get another Flagstones to allow ourselves to keep doing this? We also actually need another white source to cast Windswept Heath, or to cast Apparition, but we do admittedly have those in hand. I'm not sure once again, um, so I'll just get Flagstones because it's white and it lets us keep ramping if we have the luxury to do so. Like maybe if the opponent kept a one lander and there's no must answer card coming right up. No such luck. All right. Hopefully they tap out for an Archie and it's not like Sentinel, Heretic, Druid, Mega go off turn. But it is. Oh no. Oh no. Getting elf balls. Okay. Let me mute here while they go off. Okay, it was only a Realm Walker, which is still very good, right? We draw Noble Hierarch. So... Got Apparition something. It could definitely just be Heritage Druid here. That could make the most sense. Because, like, Realm Walker is the value engine, but Herit taking Heritage Druid slows them down. We're max punished for that if they find another one, especially off of Realm Walker. That would be a disaster. But let's say we take Realm Walker away. We're then just kind of, um, you know, hoping that their four cards after they draw is not enough for them to go crazy. Actually, the more I talk about it, the more I kind of want to just take Realm Walker here. But it is very close. I think I'm taking Realm Walker, but again, close, close, close. And then we get to go Heath into Forest for Hierarch, which enables us to grow the Reclaimer and give it Exalted, right? So Elvish Reclaimer, awesome there. Ramping us on turn two, uh, four or five for one, beat down on turn four, or on turn three. It's not, again, the perfect circumstances for us because we don't have the tools to really blow out elves. And I'm not used to that. Most decks I play have tools to blow out elves, right? Um, so this is a weird spot to be in. Uh, okay, so far looking punished, right? Heretic Druid into Dwinan's Elite, a classic elf line. But... We are kind of making them play off the top more this way. If they just have a collected company, then that's going to suck. Um, they have Archdruid. That also sucks. What is their last card in hand? Is it also a Coco? It's a Zuri. Oh, no. Oh, no. Very bad news. All right. Now we got to find another apparition for Zuri, basically. Uh, this elf can regenerate. No block. Noble Hierarch. Mm, okay, well. Wish we had a Blast Zone to tutor. Although it's not as amazing as it might otherwise be in some situations against elves, right? But I still wish we had one. I don't even know what I'm getting here necessarily. I think we're pretty dead, actually. I mean, we can go get the Valakut just in case we top deck Dryad next turn and we're still alive. Otherwise, I don't really know what to do here.
Yeah, so I guess we are just in chump block mode here, trying to stay alive. Trying to draw Valakut next turn. But I'm assuming we just are already dead from the Izuri um, overrun, because this is Trample as well. But just as in game one, you know, let's make the opponent figure it out if we're dead or not, right? But we've got to be. Um, so I would say on the whole, we were punished for taking Heritage Druid. They, specifically the um, Mana Sync that's Azuri. But they had an Arch Druid anyway. I, I think we're just actually kind of in a no-win spot here. Maybe one thing we could have done is tried to just ignore the Realm Walker and do more of our own plan on the turn we apparitioned Realm Walker. Alright. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's perfect for a double over on You Got Me. Cool. Alright. Uh, yeah, a couple pretty lopsided games here. Um, modern is a lot more lopsided than I realize sometimes because BGX midrange bringing everything more toward that 50-50 ish spot most of the time. Uh, we had a couple pretty lopsided ones here, but hey, if I've got to lose to a deck, uh, might as well be elves. So hey, good times. Uh, well done to the elf ball player. And, uh, let's go to round three playing against a different deck if we could. All right. Uh, doing pretty well with the die rolls. Definitely fine with that. Definitely keeping this. It's a nice balanced hand with what our deck wants to do. Um, no complaints here, really. I don't think it's like a top 5% hand or anything like that, but it is definitely very well-rounded, very decent, very solid, and can go in a couple different directions depending on our needs. So, Uh-oh. Opponent's got, what's his name? The Kaldheim Tivar. Tivar. Tivarkel Prestige, Avi. That's cool. And it's also an elf. So <laughs> if we have elves two rounds in a row, that would just confirm that the matchmaker is out to get me, right? Blood Crypt. Shriekhorn. Okay. Well, that's rough, but we do have main deck Scoos in our opener, so maybe we can completely control the game with that because we're lucky enough to be on the play. We're going to have to hope that's the case. Will opponent activate in response, or will they try to overload us? Depends on what their hand is. They kept six, I think. They will activate in response. Got it. They just get a creeping chill and a bloodstained mire. I don't care at the moment. And if we just simply get to untap without them going completely crazy, then we'll be we'll be doing all right. Opponent with Conflagrate and Cathartic Reunion. Okay, so we do, like, if they go to their main phase and they have a second land, which I think they will, Dredge always keeping two landers, basically, or they have to maul unless they're going real deep, then they will Conflagrate away our board and also go off. So we have to eat the Conflagrate. And then we have to hope that they don't also have, like, second land into Cathartic Reunion into something completely nuts. Again, if we just untap here, if we just untap without them going ham, it'll probably be hard to lose. But if they go ham right here, right now, it's their time to steal the game. They're going to fetch a tapped land, and they're going to say go. Well, I like that just fine, my friends. I like that just fine. 
if we wanted to really have the most possible green available, I'd play Ghost Quarter so we could GQ ourselves, but I don't believe that to be necessary. If we also wanted to be a little bit more proactive, we could play Dryad into GQ planes and have two green up that way. That's actually relatively tempting. It's slightly less safe than having three SKUs activations and just playing Valakut, but it is very tempting. I'm going to go for it. We came here to cast Dryad and do busted stuff. Let's go for that. Opponent probably is like, oh, what are you doing? Tapping out with your green, really? But their Shree Corn is tapped out. They could haggle in response here before we can play a land. But we're just doing proactive stuff. We're just doing proactive things. Look at that, Exalted mattering hugely. Noble Hierarch in general mattering hugely. Um, I should say Exalted is kind of cake here, but yeah. So hopefully I don't come to regret that. It's a little bit of a bold play, maybe. Life from the Loam Stinkweed Imp. Two dredge spells, huh? Hmm. We can eat both of them, or we can I eat neither of them, I think. I think maybe I should eat both of them because they didn't have a reunion or anything or like a haggle or anything else last turn, right? So they're just going to have one natural draw. I think I'm just going to eat both here. Or maybe at least eat the imp. Eating life from the low might not be as necessary. Let's let them dredge life from the loam. I'm kind of splitting the difference here. They find only prized amalgam of relevance and other cathartic reunion hitting the bin. So now we can compete over the payoffs if they have another way to do anything. Um, if we survive this turn, which I, again, think we will based on how they sequenced last turn, then we really can't lose from here, I wager. And we'll be rewarded for just being a little bit more proactive, getting that dryad down. OP shocking. Oh, they got to conflagrate another one. Mmm. Yikes. Big yikes. They have to point all four damage at Scoos, though, and then we'll get to eat one thing in response. And, oh, but they have two Stinkweed Imps, really? Man. Okay. So if I hadn't played Dryad, we'd have one more mana, and they couldn't do this. One more green mana. That sucks. All right, so with that in mind, do we just eat the Amalgam? as the only real payoff in there, or do we start trying to compete over the dredge spells? I think we eat the amalgam here. But man, that's rough. Okay. So I, I guess that's my bad. I, I think it's rel relatively unlikely that we get punished, but they had perhaps the only thing that I can think of anyway that really does punish us, and we can still quite possibly win this race anyway. We'll see what we draw. Uh, we draw planes, so... Let's just do the Dryad thing, and that's a good way to win the race, right? I should have played Courser first to gain the life. That was my bad. I'm just thinking about last turn still. Should have played Courser first to gain two life. Um, so we have a Reclaimer coming off the top. All right, between some life gain and 
the ability to go upstairs with a few more Valakut triggers. Hopefully we still got this. But opponent going to get to dredge a Stinkweed Imp here. They're totally empty-handed, though. That's not nothing. Bloodgast Ox of Agonis. Jeez. That is brutal. But again, I only I guess I only have myself to blame here. You hate to see it, though. Really hate to see it. We need Corsair to bail us out with, like, a fetch land off the top, because then we'll have um, seven lands total, which means it'll be boom, boom, and then ghost quarter ourselves for the GG, unless they find a creeping chill to gain life right now. So if Corsair finds us a fetch land off the top, we still get there. And if we fade the chill. Opponent with a couple more oxen in the bin, so their grind game is real. Um, and even if we don't find a land off the top at all with Corsair, maybe Reclaimer off the top. If we can stay alive until then, we'll keep us in it um, with a little chump blocking on our end. I guess we should probably have this game wrapped up already. My bad, my bad, my bad. I usually feel like I play unnecessarily cautiously against Reg, and the one time I say YOLO, the opponent gets us with exaxes, basically, right? Oh, no land, bro, come on. Okay. Okay, well, hey, I never claimed to be good with this deck. Never claimed to be good. Uh, I'll be honest, though, a second conflagrate was not on my radar. All right, if we don't have another land off the top, that'll be really rough. And if we do have a land, because it's a 26 land deck, and if we do have the land naturally again, we get to go nuts. So we need to chump block for sure with Noble Hierarch, and then from there it's just a question of what other blocks, if any, do we need to make. So if we don't block anything else, we go to nine. And are we take nine, we go to seven. I think that's a relatively safe life total. We can also maybe more easily kill them on the crack back this way. They would have to find three creeping chills to kill us, um, if I'm not mistaken. We've only seen one. No, we've seen two, so they can't even kill us this turn if we go to seven. Right? We take nine, we go to seven. All right. I think I'm supposed to block this way. We will see how it goes. Next move has got to be another ox, right? And that's what we're worried about. I guess they can't cast both off of Dalkmore Salvage alone. Hmm. <clears throat> There's one chill. There's the other chill. All right, so we go to one. They get to do everything they want. I hope I'm not missing anything with Valakut here. You control at least five other mountains. So ghost quartering, I think we're one land too short, but I, I hope I'm not mistaken about that. Okay. Skyclave apparition. We can't fetch or well, no, we can with Courser, right? Oh, this is too skill testing for me. I'm just brand new to the deck. Um, 
This is too skill testing for me. <laughs> so the opponent's at 15. That's the real problem here. I'm really not sure what we're supposed to do. I think probably get a fetch land, but don't quote me on that. Oh, a second Valakut's an option, especially because that enters tapped. Ah, yeah, that was bad too, wasn't it? My bad, guys. My bad. We didn't need a fetch land there. We have another land off the top. Yeah, the fact that they found all their creeping chills, though, is proving to be enormously irrelevant. What if I had gotten a... What if I had gotten the second Valakut there? Do we have lethal? I'll feel so bad if we did. Especially because I punted with the Scoos earlier. Well, we get to keep going. Yeah, if we got the second Valakut, which I thought of like a second after I grabbed the fetch land. So dumb. So dumb. But, oh, with flagstones, ghost quartering flagstones should do it, right? Let's hope so, because I really don't want to lose this one. I'm assuming we have lands to get. I'm just, just taking actions now. My brain is fried. Is this the most undeserved win of all time, or what? Hey, there's another land. Let's go. No, I will not pay two life. Yes, I will point the Valakid at you. Okay. Could have made this a lot easier. Let's make sure we click yes. Could have made this a lot easier on ourselves, but we do get there. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> yes, that was totally, that's, that was the perfect line, right? Perfect lines all around. In any case, uh, we don't have that much to do against Dredge, do we? Um, no hard grave hate. We can path some stuff. It's a little whatever. Um, Night of Autumn, tag Streetcorn, it's a little whatever. Phyrexian Revoker, also against Streetcorn, it's maybe a little quicker to come down than Autumn sometimes. Um... I don't think we want to do too much here. I think Oriate Champion is probably maybe worth playing, though. This is where I'm totally out of my comfort zone, because not only am I not used to playing some of these cards, I'm also not used to how they fit into non-BGX decks, especially when we're not bringing in hard graveyard hate, right? So, with that in mind, um, how do we want to side? Well... I think I think I'm gonna like put some faith in Oriac Champion here, so I don't want to trim Corsair. I want to trim Tracker rather than Corsair. Maybe all three Trackers is fine. Maybe like a Ramanop Excavator is fine. I guess Skyclave Apparition is okay. Not convinced we need all four though. Not convinced that's the type of game that we're gonna win if we're doing that type of stuff. I think we're gonna keep all the ramp, um, keep the rest of our top end. Maybe cut a Apparition. That might be wrong. So do we bring in just like three path to exile and call it a day? Or do we mess with like a revoker? Let's sort by converted mana cost, and notably not sorting by mana value. Now we look quick. We look okay. I, I think I might run it like this and just see how it goes. Um, I can't really put much faith in my around the edges ability given what I just mentioned and <laughs> what we did last game right um this is a weird hand just because it has double valakut if this one of these valakuts was a fetch or a shock or a flagstones or anything really I'd definitely keep it as it is we don't have a scoos um we have a fail rate of like not being able to do enough I think maybe we should mulligan this but I think it's close. All right. We got Reclaimer into Flagstones. Once again, no scoos. Maybe we just keep this and try to 
like stick a champion and stay alive. Um, I'm going to keep it. You know, Scoo's on the draw, whatever, might be just a tad slow anyway. So, um, we're operating off Horizon Canopy too for a little bit. That sucks, but whatever, a bottom night. I'm not feeling super confident here, but maybe they have kept a medium sixer. Maybe they stumble. Maybe, maybe, right? Lots of maybes. Turn one, conflagrate. Got it. Turn one, planes, or yeah, turn one, planes off the top for us. I'm still going to take a damage and play my Elvish Reclaimer. Let's see if they have the second land, right? And if they don't, let's see if they can beat Oriac Champion into Collected Company. Which I'm uh, Dr Dredge is perfectly capable of, right? But they just might not have it all rolled up. And they, I had a feeling they might only be on a one-lander. Let's go. That is hype. Because now we untap with Reclaimer. We get to do the Flagstones thing. And that's just what we're here to do. I guess technically we can... Hold up effects here or whatever. I, I'm tempted to do it now just to reduce my mental load, right? Opponent not activating Shriekhorn, which I think because they need to draw second land mainly, but maybe our mind game's having a little something to do with it too. Probably not. Definite, yes. All right, there's the flagstones. Triggered ability. And here's the reclaimer activated ability. Yeah, no Bajuka bug or anything to tutor either. I wonder if there's any room to play those, but our land base is pretty bad anyway. Is it worth a sideboard slot? I don't know. But be super cool to have access to that type of stuff. Um... So what do we get here? Do we once again just kind of get Valakut, get it out of the way, or maybe we get another Flagstones? Because if we get Flagstones next turn, we can do Oriac Champion and ramp, it, ramp again. Sure. Another Oriac Champion, or do we just do a double Oriac Champion and dare them to beat this? I think maybe one should be sufficient for now because they're stumbling so hard. I'm just going to main phase this now. There are getting to be too many decision points, right? And now if we find a Skuz, it's going to have a ton of mana to use, right? Alright, now I'm going to get a Valakut just while I can, even though there's no immediate need for it. Just like, you know, before they find maybe a land for Conflagrate and they take care of our Reclaimer or whatever. Because we've got Coco lined up for next turn. Like, we can do the Reclaimer thing again if they don't do much, or we can go just, like, champion into Collected Company. Hey, there's the second land, but a DTB is tapped. And now they're going to start milling because they now know that they're able to cast spells and flashback conflagrate and all the rest. So we could go champion main or we could go collected company in case we find Scoos. What do we value more? It's only like two extra life off of champion. Maybe we're supposed to Coco first, give ourselves the most options here. Um... Maybe we Coco even before we play a land just to see exactly what we can find. All right, I'm going to do that. We do find a Scooz and a Dryad. Okay, those are some good ones. 
Those are some quite good ones, not gonna lie. Insanity. Really, really strong cocoa. Uh, we get to start Dominum with Valakit. Good thing I got that Valakit last turn, eh? And they're just going to scoop to that. Yep, so a more aggressive line would be to reclaim her away the flagstones, make another land drop, still have two lands, or is it? would it be only one activation for Skuz? Um... Alternatively, we just play more cautiously, learn our lesson, hold up three Scoos activations, have this inevitability. Absolutely wrecking Dredge here in game two, although they did stumble by keeping a one land six rather than mulling more aggressively to five. We could have gotten run over by a fast Dredge five or indeed maybe a Dredge four or three, no doubt about it. But we kept a six that was imperfect, but we had we had the value, and the power of Elvish Reclaimer there was in total incomplete evidence. Um, I didn't really deserve the game one win, but our deck did. So ultimately, the deck looking pretty good here. I don't know if it's a good matchup. Maybe we don't need Hard Graveyard Hate or a Bajuka Bog, but these are things that occur to me uh, from the outside looking in. Anyway, a nice win here. Let's go to round four. All right, another victorious die roll. And another fine keep. This reminds me of, you know, kind of one of our hands against Jund, where we've got a lot to like, but if they're one for oneing us, maybe it's not quite as exciting as it would be against, you know, less efficiently interactive decks. But we are opening a lot on Reclaimer plus Flagstones, and I'm grateful for that. That's obviously an insane synergy right now. Uh, we've got. Excuse in case that matters, otherwise we're speeding our way up toward a turn three collected company, and we're against blue-white control, it seems. Got it. Or some blue-white X control. No idea how this matchup should go. But let's just accrue some value with Elvish Reclaimer here. And we don't even need to try the Coco on their end step because we've just got Reclaimer going to town, right? Unfortunately, we have two other Temple Gardens already in our hand. That's not really ideal. But we'll just go get another Flagstones, keep... Keep on ramping. And then opponent's going to path our Reclaimer, allowing us to resolve a main phase collected company, which I think we're probably supposed to do. Um, unless they have Spell Pierce, which they won't. Or maybe Force of Negation, right? So there's still a couple of reasons maybe not to. Uh, we've also found Dryad, which is fascinating here. Huh. Dryad into two lands into Scoos is a thing. And then we're going to make them basically find a board wipe. Um, with, from which we can potentially recover with Coco. So I think I'm going for that. but it's very possible that we should have that we had a higher ceiling with collected company really not sure OP with the field of ruin yeah that's uh it's actually a tough one i'm going to untap with scoos rather than go let them snap path us in response i guess if they have that Skyclave Apparition, not too excited about that one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think we're just supposed to attack and say go here. 
think there's a ample reason to hold that land in hand in this deck, in this situation. Are they going to field just our township here? Sure, I'll take that. I understand why, though, for sure. Don't not saying it's bad. We're going to run out of fetchables in this matchup, I bet. Oh, OP with no third land. Wow. Or not, sorry, no fourth land. I don't think there's a reason to go for the Coco here. They could just hard cast Force of Negation or something. If they miss it for one more turn, they'll be discarding the hand size. If we draw Valakut naturally, that would be nuts. Instead, we're hitting Skyclave Apparitions, which is pretty bad, right? I'd be so much more excited for literal any other three drop in our deck. But that's uh, a weird, weird situation. Again, I'd, I mean, if I had Cocoed, maybe we're Cocoing the, oh, into those Apparitions, which is not great now, is it? Okay, OP with an Archmage's Charm. So now if they miss the land in the top three, they're discarding twice to hand size or their main phasing effects. Uh, probably not going to happen, but that'd be cool if it did. Nope. So do you have Supreme Verdict? If so, do you use it? They have Teferi Time Raveler. I think I'm supposed to collect a company in response to this and just go basically for the kill this upcoming turn or the overwhelming advantage. Excavator and another Dryad, pretty poor. I mean, decent value, but pretty poor. And if they like slow roll the verdict, I'll be really in trouble. If they just don't have a verdict, then whatever. All right, but I mean, excavators value. I mean, they're all just bodies to dryad. Pretty redundant apparition can eat to fairy, allowing us to focus on clocking the opponent. But ultimately, ultimately, some relatively meh hits, I guess. Okay, they will bounce one of our Dryads. Hey, OP, diction to hand size. That Force of Negation, indeed. That was part of our read, and we have found Knight of the Reliquary, so... Um, if we play <clears throat> Flagstones and Gavany Township out of the graveyard, our stuff's getting pretty darn big if we activate Township. We, we might be able to make them have, like, Verdict or Bust that way. things four plus it to activate so we can cast a apparition as well i guess it makes slightly mo the most sense actually to play temple garden from hand It's not even clear that we need to apparition the Teferi, right? But this is one of the only good targets that will be provided to us, so why not? I 
All right, LP, unless you have a path, you're at three. Even if you do have a path, it might be verdict or bust. Obviously, the cryptic command loop is always a thing. Looks like they might have a path, though. No? An opt from the Mystical Archive. I know these divide opinion. I on on the whole, the project I think is super cool. Uh, I love the flavor text and the art and the frame and everything in general. There are a couple duds, right? No doubt. Yeah, verdict. Hate, hate verdict, right? But, but that's fair enough. And we have another dryad in hand. So, like, if we just have a way to find Valakut, or we just draw one naturally, that would be a thing. Um. We don't, but I'm going to resolve a Dryad, and I think we're also supposed to just go for it. Like, let's play another night, and if the opponent cannot beat these creatures here, then we get to uh, tutor a Valakut and win that way. The Nightmare Snap Verdict, but even so, they'll be cleaning up two of their own creatures. They are still at three. We can hold the forest in hand and just, like, draw Valakut naturally, finish them off, potentially. The opponent could also, of course, just have spot removal or bounce effects or something for this stuff. Um, they'd need to bounce the knight, if that's what their plan is. Because they need to make it summoning sick again. Yeah, snap verdict. Okay. Supreme Verdict is incredible against our deck. That is not exactly news, I suppose. So now we need to find another way to get three damage over the line. Main phase collected company? Sure. Hopefully there's no force of negation, right? It's a good draw, not going to lie. Man, this is uh, a little bit frustrating, not going to lie. Turn off auto yields. Should I? I'm wondering if I should hard cast Apparition or not. Because if we resolve it, we can Gavany Township and attack for three. But I, I don't think I'm supposed to. They, we got another, we forced another snap out of their hand, right? But, man, I truly hate playing against blue-white control uh, with mid-range decks and the fact that we're not black based is not really an exception of course they've got big tough their curve out's been insane uh despite missing a land insane our curve out's been good too but now's the point where we flood i guess yeah i, I wish i had cast apparition last turn just to but you know who we didn't know we'd have a dud on top, I guess. Well, it's got Fuel of Ruin now, too. They lack for very little. I was having such fun until right now. <laughs> All right, what can we draw? More lands. I don't know why, like, part of the reason that blue-white control tilts me on mid-range is this happens a disproportionate amount of the time where, like, they just, just barely keep up with us, and that's fine. And then we just draw parade effect lands off the top. I swear it happens all the damn time. But... Opponent's got us here pretty darn good. They've played a little tough out. We'll at least try and apparition that, but it'd be nice if we have a second and third spell rolled up to follow up, should it not resolve. That's the whole idea against control in these top deck wars. It's like, all right, save up for a big turn where you can force something through. Um, well, tireless Tracker, at least we have two spells now. Let's see if one of them, or maybe dare we hope for both, uh, can resolve. Tracker could be really nice if it sticks. 
Paul could have two cryptic commands, though. You know that, right? You know that, right? <laughs> There's one cryptic command. They fired it off pretty quickly. All right. Uh, t tracker loses here to Mana Leak, too. And that's exactly what they have. That is so tilting. We could have played around that by playing a land first, but that's not correct. We just got to try to follow up with our land drops and, and make clues. Jeez, I hated that. Anyway, um, I like Phyrexian Revoker here, and I, I'm feeling like our sideboard maybe doesn't have... Uh, it's just like a lot of matches. I'm like, I don't know if we have that much to do. Um, I don't think we like these Eidolon Archon style effects. Archon's more interesting because it's a more respectable beater. It can tempo them out with the final line of text. I mean, maybe um, even Mind Sensor might be better than bad stuff, but I think we're kind of scraping the bottom of the barrel here. And the only card I definitely want is Revoker. So... What don't we need? Um, they're a Snapcaster Mage deck, so we're probably supposed to leave our Scoozes in. Um, everything looks pretty fine. Maybe we trim a Dork or two, but like trimming one for a Evoker, I like. Maybe we trim another one for one of these types of cards. Um, even Mind Sensor is kind of cool because it has Flash as well. You play around Permission a little bit that way. Um, I think I'll try one on the play. Other than that, if we wanted to cut more dorks, like I could see maybe bringing in two of these for two more hierarchs, but I think on the other hand, that probably makes our curve a little too top heavy. So I'm just going to run it like this. All right. Well, it's a, va it's a slow value hand. I think we keep those. Forest go kind of sucks. I'm going to keep the Windswept Heath around, though, just for Tracker on turn three, right? Yeah, we were so close yet so far to winning that one. Um, I think all my lines where I'm sitting right now felt good, felt right, felt justifiable. I'm sure we could have done stuff different, though, and as always, I could be missing something. Um, yeah, Elvish Reclaimer. I mean, I'm kind of happy I found something to do, but... Having that in the opener would have completely and utterly changed the complexion of everything that's going on right now. Uh, that said, it's still definitely fine to find something here to do. Not not hating in the least, right? Are we pathing the Reclaimer, or are we opting? We are opting. Path of the Reclaimer would have been cool if it enabled Tracker and to land on turn three. And hey, don't get me wrong, I do think blue-white control is a pretty cool deck. I just hate playing mid-range against it. Huh. They're going to path now? Well, we can activate now. I guess I'm not going to. I guess I'm just going to, like, deploy a knight. If we add, yeah. Yeah, I guess pathing now I can respect that play for sure. Um... Yeah, it's hard to know without knowing exactly what we're going to draw, but... Okay, another land is a little bit whatever. But with the trackers around, it's at least hopefully decent, but it's just so hard to play a deck like this into Supreme Verdict, right? Even on the play. They can just catch right back up at any point. There's not much you can do about it. Unless you have the luxury of like a lot of collected companies, other like flash creatures and stuff. OP with a timely reinforcements. All right. 
I respect that. Maybe that signals they don't necessarily have a verdict. I think we have to kind of uh, make that assumption here. All right, so if we're making that assumption, we definitely start there. Tracker into land. And then what? So let's remind ourselves what Knight does here. Sack of Forest or Plains? Land card right onto the battlefield, then shuffle. So we can get a lot of mileage out of that right now by, like, we can get to play an Excavator too. But we are walking into Verdict. I mean... It's not that bad if we walk into Verdict because we made a bunch of clues. We grew the graveyard and the opponent just basically cast a gain six, which is pretty bad against us, if all that is what goes down. So, I guess we will activate Knight. Put a land onto the battlefield. I probably flagstones. Valakut will enter tap, so he can't do that. Possibly Horizon Canopy makes sense too. But I think with the clues, we just want to get the flagstones here. And then we can even GQ our own flagstones if we think that's good. We're kind of taxing our own basics a little bit that way, but we're just making so many clues. And then if the opponent doesn't have Verdict, we get to go nuts with the Excavator. Hmm. Sure. Let's go ham. Hmm. So now I'm actually thinking that, like, we've gotten enough value and we can just win the game with these two creatures. I'm just going to crack a clue and not walk into Verdict. We'll clean, we'll come back from the Verdict with Excavator and Tracker in hand, right? Or at least it's possible that we could. All right. So, yeah, definitely a judgment call there. But a uh, fantastic turn, no matter how you slice it, no matter whether we end up winning on the back of it or not. Definitely showing a lot of what this deck can do. And there is no verdict, so... Okay. I think they'd still fire it off if they had it, right? Still no lands in hand for us, which is pretty awkward. Let's just... Try to draw some naturally before we try to jam an excavator. Hmm. Bruh. Still going to try to draw some naturally. We haven't played into Verdict yet. Let's just keep not playing into Verdict. <sighs> Even when things are going well, they're not. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Guess we're making more clues by going to fetch a temple garden. We're gonna make our it's it's tough because you want to leave planes in the deck for flagstones and all that stuff, right? But let's just keep making a thousand clues and hopefully that will be good enough. Alright. So now if we draw off of clue, we'll have to pitch to hand size if it's not a land. So maybe now we play like Reclaimer, Hierarch, and Assume they don't have a verdict. I can't believe we've missed a land for this long. I 
I don't think they have a verdict. They might here be, well, maybe they do. Whatever. We'll find out. So attack with tracker. I was thinking maybe they would like counter and bounce or something like that. I'm going to have to play quicker if we do take him to game three. You know, first time out with a new deck. These things will happen. All right, OP jumps. Let's go for a higher arc. Let's say go. It is a cryptic command to bounce. I thought so. Given all that, I think we're pretty rewarded for our sequencing, frankly. We're going to field us. Yeah. All right, Windswept Heath. We can just put a tracker back down, keep trying to make clues. Play that type of game. Sure. I don't think I can afford to take too much time on these decisions, so I'm just going to start making them, right? I'm actually going to start trying to end this game, too. We've got Collected Company for their run step. <laughs> okay, opponent didn't use their mana for all that much that turn. All right, I think we're going for the Coco here. If they're just like ultra disciplined with a Supreme Verdict and they have the luxury of sitting behind a cryptic command to tap our team down, then we're going to lose. Otherwise, our position is obviously pretty decent here. <clears throat> They're going to concede to that and not even try to time us out. I appreciate that, OP. So we've got 11 minutes to win game three. Gentle, personly, gentlemanly, gentlewomanly move from our opponent. Um, I, I like to play for time against control when I'm in the lead, but um, not everybody does. And if you're like a control player 24-7, <laughs> that starts to probably become a lot less exciting to you, right? So I respect that, and that helps us as well. Um, but I guess we outvalued them there. Still a stressful one to navigate, though, and uh, it's going to be a lot tougher on the draw. I don't think we're probably changing much. I still think cutting a couple dorks makes sense, although maybe they're a little better on the draw. I don't know. Uh, I'm running it back, I think. All right, we've got a greenless opening hand. That is obnoxious. And two scoozes. That combination means we have to maul, I think. All right, this one just has a few dorks, nothing all that exciting. I'm going to put our basic planes back because we want to leave our basics in the deck, and 
We're going to hope our Reclaimer just carries us here, right? Okay. A collected company off the top is a pretty good way to start rebuilding our kind of low on gas mold to six hand. Reclaimer, I have to say, has been just about the MVP of this league. And uh, that stands to reason, right? There's a reason we play this one-drop non-monodork in a collected company deck. Although it is it is a monodork in a way, I guess. And look, it's drawing out... Oh, what is this? I was thinking maybe a path. It is a path. Okay. Yeah, draws out a path. That's pretty good. We have another Reclaimer. Sadly, we cannot double spell this turn. But... I'm just going to deploy this Reclaimer. That really punishes the opponent for that play. Um, and we'll see if they have another way to deal with this one. I guess Teferi would be a little bit rough for us, but if they tap out, we can go for a Coco. Or we could cast Apparition plus Hierarch, perhaps. Uh, they're just going to main phase another path. Got it. Well, now this lets us play a Monodork. Um, well, not with double flagstones in hand, right? So what do we do? I think I'm just going to play a Knight in a Hierarch here. This might be a mana leak. That'd be rough. That'd be kind of rough. Hmm. Yeah. Or is it uh, the delve counter spell? It sure is. Okay. Yeah, I hate to see that. I had a feeling that would resolve. I was incorrect. I would love to draw another Elvish Reclaimer, actually. We draw another Collected Company. You can't, you can't really say no to that. I'm going to say no to the attack, though. It'll make them delve if they have another logic knot, maybe. Um, they also, I also don't want to let them flash in a snapcaster. Another spell more accurately, maybe, to trade. Big Teth. Guess we Coco in response to make sure this resolves. Unless they have Force of Negation plus a blue card, but we they don't, and we have Phyrexian Revoker with which we'll name Tef and Knight. All right, so they get one activation out of Tef. Um, now, as we often do, we just really want to fade Verdict. If we can fade Verdict, we're in an okay spot. Verdant Catacombs off the top. So we can grow the knight to five simply by attacking Exalted and Fetching. We should probably attack Teferi with both, though. Exalted not really doing us many favors here. I 
and it would make no mistake, I think we still have to attack him off the field. He won't be revoked forever, even if they don't have verdict. And I think that's our first order of business, and then we can consider what to do with the knight based on the results of our next collected company, assuming it resolves. Hope he will opt to the top this time. I'm just going to fetch in the shot because it helps us pay for stuff or makes them delve more or whatever. And Teth goes down. Okay. Uh-oh. Double white. I think you know what that means. Mm-hmm. They never don't have it. We find Dryad and Avon Mind Sensor, the latter pretty poor. And honestly, the former pretty poor, unless we find another card to help it out. Not a good collected company. And we have double Skyclave Apparition in hand. Grr. Okay. Um, so, I don't think we're really accomplishing much here. I guess we need to play more patient. I'm going to hold the Apparitions. Man, what an opportunity to, to like, seize this game, but the Coco plus the top deck, very underwhelming. Very, very underwhelming. We, we could definitely play another Apparition there, right? Just to increase our clock with the gray over, but I just didn't. <laughs> Noble Hierarch, well... Opponent's Celestial Colonnade can now block us. That's so... Oh, oh, I hate this. I hate this. <laughs> oh, no. And it flies. And it flies. Right? That's been a while. Yeah, it does. All right. Well, this sucks. I'm sure we're going to lose now, but it's just such a perfect opportunity because they could have just like a couple other lands in hand. And then, like, what are they going to, like, we just play some cards and take them to beat town. But Celestial Colonnade holding off our attacks and our top decks just in the collected company just being so weak. <sighs> okay, timely with no life gain. But this bodies are, eh, they're actually not that relevant, but fair enough. Elvish Reclaimer. All right, see, I think we have to try to resolve that one. That one's going to be fantastic. So let's go for a Noble Hierarch first as counter magic bait. And then we can attack Exalted with Avon Mind Sensor. And they can't activate Colonnade. And maybe this prompts a little action. All right. So now if we play Reclaimer out into Cryptic Command, we don't have a great follow-up, but then we can at least maybe go wide with Apparition. If they don't have Cryptic... What, I'm going to go for it. They don't have cryptic, they might have verdict, right? And they could still regard this card as counter bait too. Okay. 
I'm going to hesitate like I'm really thinking about whether to resolve something, although I shouldn't use too much more of my clock probably for that. And then we say go. Is this, a, this is a cryptic to bounce on the end step and draw, I assume. Yeah, really, really respecting that reclaimer. I think maybe we could go back and look. Um, maybe I'll have to go back and look after I upload this more accurately. Jace the Mind Sculptor. Apparition beats him. Uh, but... I think I had the opportunity to take Reclaimer off of the uh, early, the first Coco, and I didn't. What did we take, Dryad and Knight or something like that? Still probably correct, but just shows you how powerful Reclaimer was that maybe it wasn't even correct to not take the Reclaimer, you know? Okay, are we, they're ousting the Avon Mind Sensor to protect Jace, got it. Jace just gonna get skyclaved anyway. We draw a knight. All right, let's attack with Exalted Dryad, which is a safe attack. It's gonna force a jump block here. Do we want to play around Mana Leak is my only question with any of this stuff. Um, I think we, it's probably responsible to. I guess we didn't have to. I forgot about Noble Hierarch tapping, but this way we can also play Knight and Reclaimer. So I guess we're just all in. They're, none of their sequencing makes me think that they have a um, verdict. If they do, we're going to lose. this point i hope their last card is mana leak to just trade with the knight right basically okay oh no verdict no snapcaster for verdict please one time or please as many times as it needs to win this game field of ruin yep <clears throat> oh god oh god <laughs> Ooh, this is some intensity. All right, so if we get to untap, we're supposed to probably go get Valakut right away and then do the Reclaimer Flagstones thing, if we get to untap with everybody. They're drawing two with Charm. They're playing a land. Then we're untapping. Okay, let's go. Misty Rainforest, all right. Oh, they have Fields of Ruin too, but... I guess we get a ton of, we get to do a ton of stuff. Um, okay, targeting Dryad. So in response, we should sack here, right? Uh, 
I got to just take actions. I'm not sure if they're optimal, but we're solo on the clock. I just got to go, go here. They can now field, I guess. All right, we're out of flagstones targets. We'll go get the other Valakut, I guess. And at this point, just attack a, just get rid of a blocker. Should I, maybe I should have played Misty Rainforest, but no, we're out of fetchables, right? Um, I'll put Dryad on top. Whatever, we gotta go, we gotta go. <laughs> All right, they will chump block, and I do think I'm gonna play Skyclave Apparition because I doubt we... I doubt it matters against a verdict, right? Don't know if I did anything or everything optimally there. Not going to lie. Let's see if we can get there. We've got Dryad into Misty Rainforest to deal three, and we've got a bunch of bodies on the field. Even if they can path or block the knight or something, I think we still have lethal. But then again, they have another field of ruin, so maybe not. But if they field our Valakut, we'll shuffle. I don't even know if I'm supposed to get that forest, because we actually did have one fetchable left. Whatever. Let's just hope we got the kill here, my friends. GQ. I'm just going for attacks. Kind of think we've got to. I should have played GQ to... Oh, no, no, no. I'm just so uh, looking at the clock. Obviously, GQ to hit Colonnade. Just took that just a tad too quickly. But hopefully they just have to chump. Then we give them one more turn to find something. But if this is their play, I guess we probably had the kill if I had realized it. So dummy moment. But I hope you forgive me because this has been insane. First time out in this matchup commentating this one, right? Completely insane. That's the game anyway. All right. Wow. I'm exhausted. We get there. We've cashed the league. We're playing for the 4-1 and one in round 5. And obviously I'm not playing optimally, nor am I playing with perfect comfort. Nevertheless, I, I think I'm doing myself justice my first time out. And also we are, more importantly, showcasing the power of the strategy from Tarragon. I think F. Pavlush plays this, if I'm not mistaken, as well. I don't know if Tarragon sourced it from there or if this is something that you've been working on, Tarragon. In any case, the deck is kind of insane. I still hate playing against blue-white control of mid-range decks. We do sneak over the line there. The opponent had a lot, but they didn't have a perfect curve out like they did in game one here. So we do enough. We do enough. With the deck and with the gameplay, we do enough. Uh, see you for the final round. Winning all five die rolls is definitely a gift, my friends, but this one's a one-lander with no ramp um, that we can successfully execute anyway, so we'll send it back. Um, so we're getting well, a mixed bag of luck, I guess, overall, right? I'm going to keep. My first temptation here is to bottom the Skyclave Apparition because we've just been out of a matchup where it doesn't do that much, but I think we're instead going to bottom the most uh, redundant piece of the hand, which is Noble Hierarch. And that could punish us if the opponent has exactly one kill spell, but not two. And also the third land never comes off the top, but that's not what's going to happen. We also get the value here of going Misty Rainforest into Basic Forest Noble Hierarch, which makes it look like Infect that we're on. 
very, very different approach to Infect than against a green-white value town deck. Almost at opposite ends of, of the spectrum, right? Nevertheless, not really going to be the most relevant thing. Um, because before long, OP will see what we're up to, and they're going to go bobble into push. Not a good start for us, not what we wanted to see, but we do have a second Noble Hierarch off the top, which is cool. I'm going to fetch and shock for a Temple Guard in here, because it will allow us to double white for Apparition with Hierarch if she lives, and also just leaving a few more basics in the deck unless we're against... Assassin's Trophy, but I don't know why there's no companion. I guess we're against main deck Lurus Rock, um, which would be definitely interesting. We'll see. Could be something else altogether, of course, but when I see baubles and pushes and no companion, that's what I'm thinking. Hate to mulligan against a deck like this, if that's the case. Opponents floated green and black, but hesitating here. Is it between, like, Goyf and Bob or something? Oh, it's a, oh, it's a big collective brutality. And, wow, they do whiff pretty hard because they choose to escalate to check the hand. They're not rewarded, and they pitch Inquisition, which would have hit next turn. So, we'll take that, even though losing the Reclaimer sucks. We can also at least now cast our hand. Insult to injury for OP. Uh, we draw Collected Company, which granted we can't cast quite yet. Um, however, if we untap with our creatures, we can. And also, you know, they just checked for it with Cobra, right? So, pretty nice for us. Um, let's see what OP's got now. The Bobbles certainly will have smoothed out their draws to a significant degree. Opponent's going to start getting all kinds of value if they just go land into Cat into Bobble. We might be priced into the Apparition. That's indeed what's happening. So we are against Main Deck Lurus Rock, confirmed. <clears throat> Some powerful stuff to have the Cat coming down T3. But let's see what we can do about it. We draw a Windswept Heath, so we can... Yeah, I mean, we can do any number of things here. Uh, not any number of things. We can either Coco or Apparition, basically. I shouldn't oversell it. Apparition's real good. Probably going to go for an Apparition, honestly. This is going to be a huge hit from the night. Which I think we're supposed to do rather than play the tutor game right now. Let's just do six. Who's the Tarmogoyf now, am I right? Playing against BGX twice in one league. Definitely interesting. So, I really don't expect to lose the Coco. That'd be tragic if we did. Really don't expect to lose it. If they've got a Lily, they're probably taking her down. If they've got a Thought Seize, they're probably not casting it in favor of other things. If they've got an Inquisition, it'll whiff. They're going to fetch to Revolt, then push the Knight, and then play Grimflayer. What are you doing over there? What is this treachery and treason? That's pretty cool, though. That's pretty cool. Cool Grim Flayer, here's a collected company, right? So should we main phase the Coco? Um, because if we hit another apparition, we can continue clocking. I think that alone is enough incentive. So, yeah. 
And indeed we do Apparition and Scooze, which, you know, could die to a lot because we're not going to have any mana with it for this one turn. But... Exalted, definitely relevant for increasing our clock here. And also, potentially for like if the opponent was able to push an apparition and make a 2 2, it wouldn't be as good. All right? Ooh, okay, opponent with an inquisition, well timed to get our dryad. But they're behind on board. Pretty far behind. Specifically, if Scoo's untaps, which it looks like it will. That's sweet. Birds of Paradise, huh? Well, there's not any need to play that right now. Um, so, how many creatures are in the bin? One, two, three, four, and they're all on our side. We want to eat our Dryad first to get enchantment out of there. So what's the worst thing that could happen here? Maybe they have a kill spell... Like, if they kill this apparition and then block that one. So should we sit back with this? Or should we just go for the kill? It's pretty tough to say. I think we're swinging all out. They only have one card in hand. Let's make him have removal. And they would have just killed Scoos if they had removal, though, right? No, they're playing like the Apparition game. Like, I, I get it, it's good value, but, like, allowing the Scoos to untap and also just, like, not not answering the Scoos, that, that's, like, it's pretty ambitious, right? It's pretty bold. Yeah, okay, well, you know what? Opponent's got to rip another kill spell now to beat our Scoos. That's definitely not a given at all. They have a series of chump blockers, admittedly, though. I'm going to go all in. We can play the bird next time. We can make them wonder about what's in hand. Going all in. But the bird as an exalted attacker could be a finisher here. We also want to start playing dorks out to shelter the scoos from a edict effect. Yeah, so I mean they've they've drawn a lot of removal. Um, the fact that they had abrupt decay there is definitely rough. The fact that they chose to decay the skyclaves and basically they're valuing destroying two skyclaves over our scoos. On a value axis, that makes sense, especially because they get tokens off of that. But again, they could just like never be able to handle the Scoos here, right? Uh, but they immediately draw removal for it, so they're max rewarded. Man, that's a tilt. Okay. Well, we're in big trouble now. Um, it's not even big trouble. Like We're still at 19, they're at 3. It's a top deck war. They have utility lands, we don't, admittedly. We might out top deck them on, on average, though. And they have these illusion tokens. Um, I, I maintain that that was a very risky play from opponent, but it definitely paid off because they drew the kill spell right off the top. And it's interesting that they didn't attack with Treetop Village there. Um, they're instead the second main phase cracking a peatland, right? So, yeah, I mean, we could definitely lose from here. I think it was very unlikely that we would lose from any previous position. But now we could definitely lose. How funny would it be if, like, birds, exalted birds just won this race? I'm about to hit for eight, though. If they swing with treetop. Which they're once again not, so I'm not going to block. 
the things that kill us for not blocking next turn are relatively limited. It's like questing beast, basically, as far as I can tell. Another bird bra moment. Okay, we can out top deck them, but I, I guess we won't. <laughs> uh, does opponent have another kill spell here? All right. <clears throat> well, I don't know what they have. I don't know why they're not attacking with Treetop Village, but we have another jump blocker or another exalted attacker. But really, if they only have one removal spell, now they point it at the dork. Go get a planes for more balanced mana, because that's we don't need to worry about the value anymore. Um, interestingly, Gavany Township would also be lethal off the top. That occurs to me. All right. Please let's see the concession to the OP Birds of Paradise Exalted attack. That would be justice. That would be justice, my friends. How funny would that be? Okay, here comes Tree Top Village. <clears throat> It might be correct to chump block here, just so we don't uh, die to another collective brutality. I think that's going to be the call I make here. And again, if they only have one kill spell, all they need to do is kill the Hierarch. Like, losing another bird I don't think matters, unless their last two cards are untapped land Liliana. It's so unlikely. It's so unlikely, I think it's better to chump block and beat a brutality. Okay. <clears throat> Dryad. Well, let's try the bird's kill, I guess. <laughs> oh, birds of paradise, noble hierarch, name a better combo in modern. Can't be done. <clears throat> cool. So, against good old rock. I know it well. I know it well. It is cat rock. Um, our paths are decent. Uh, Revoker is better than it is against Jund. I don't know if I want it, but it's better than against Jund. Uh, Oriac Champion is worse than it is against Jund, but I still might want her. The problem is rock is so green that their green fatties can just overrun her. But, you know, they're on Grim Flayer. Then again, he tramples. You know what I mean? Like, it's still kind of a little bit here, a little bit there. But we're considering these eight cards, and none of them make me feel that happy. And uh, ultimately, we might just be, once again, cutting dorks because they're bad top decks and they're going to die anyway, and playing a very dedicated value game. Um, the, the path is the big question. I think we want some paths against the Luris deck. I, on Rock, I never mind getting pathed. We have so many mana sinks, we can use those extra uh resources very well but at the same time it's like okay gotta have some removal spells here i think so i think we're playing without revoker let's do a hedged thing where it's three path one orient champion and then we have to wonder do we leave like two man mana dorks in because they have some utility as we just saw there and also because they you know, they won't always have a kill spell for it. Or do we just go all in on a longer game? I think I'm going to go all in on the longer game on the draw. We have, tw like, we don't need these to curve, to, like, cast our spells. We are a 26 land deck and everything's like a 1, 2, 3, or in the case of Coco, 4 drop, right? So that's my thinking anyway. Let's see how we do. The Birds of Paradise kill. What a time to be alive. All right, this is a slow value hand. I'll keep it. It's totally reasonable to keep this. And 
see how far we can get off of it. Double Oriac Champion has the potential to do some stuff, but, you know, OP keeping seven on the play with the discard, they're going to really show us um, a good curve out, you have to assume. I wonder if they play Plague Engineer. If they don't take a champion, we might have to watch out for that. If they do take a champion, they take Skyclave Apparition. That's kind of the one I was least expecting them to take, right? Because Tracker's the big X for one potential, Aurea Champion's the big hate piece. Um, of course, if they have like another discard spell for Tracker, then it's whatever. You can disregard the first part of that, but still, wasn't really expecting the Apparition to go down. Grim Flare. That's a nice, uh, nice one-two punch there on the play. Flare gonna do a lot of setup work here. We draw another apparition, which has got to be pretty nice here. So I think maybe exactly one time I'm gonna go get a base. Getting a basic planes feels terrible here, though. Whatever. We're gonna faction shock. We have scoos too, so. Let's just regain this life with Champion if we can. Alright, so we want to fade Plague Engineer and Liliana, basically. Because we are not priced into running both Champions. Nevertheless, Plague Man would be pretty bad. Lily would be pretty bad. Might as well save a life here. Pretty cool getting hit by Grimflare. It's been a cool league overall. OP just dumping a bunch in the graveyard there. Bobble and Forest. Please no Luris, that would be obnoxious. But, the, I mean, so far they look really rewarded for playing main deck cat. And uh, if you haven't seen my videos, my deep dive on Luris... Is it better to play as a companion or a main deck? Please check that out. I think it's a good video. I think it's some information worth pondering. And um, there's certainly pros and cons to both. I don't think the gap between them is large at all. And uh, one of the big advantages to playing cat main deck is tempo. You get to start, you know, doing one-for-one -one trades, pressuring the opponent, and also... Warrior Champions ability, yes. Also, of course, just like... accruing value right away, but they don't have it. They have Tarmogoyf. So they might have a push or something here, but I still think Skyclave Apparition makes some sense. Sure enough. <clears throat> Opponent did that push a little hastily, though, because they could have seen... Well, maybe he'll attack into it, right? They could have got me with the illusion. Yeah, so I I kind of thought they might, but I was still... Oh, then Plague Engineer? Oh my goodness, we're getting wrecked. Um, I was still hoping they wouldn't, though. I think with our progression versus theirs, we kind of had to hope that they didn't. Um, but, oh man... We're now also pretty punished for leaving the Grim Flayer alone because Push grew it to a 4-4. And it's a, just a slightly slower clock than Goyf, but not by much. And the setup uh, of stacking the deck and filling the graveyard is more than worth it. So, um, we're getting rocked here. Make no mistake. I told you guys they'd show us a good curve out here, right? Yeah. Maybe, I, I think I've played correctly so far, but maybe I should have uh, apparitioned the Grim Flayer. Opponent not taking any of those discard spells, I guess, at this stage. That makes some sense. And we got Scavenging Ooze. That's a good find. That's a real good find, but I think I'm going to take our uh, value off of Tireless Tracker here and then try to stabilize with Skoos after this.
Lily the Last Hope. Oh my god, this is a beating. This is a beating. That's insane. So now we are all in on just simply, like, them not being able to kill Skoos. That's so bad. Yep. <clears throat> hey, you know, they're on the play. They opened up with this card, and then they had a pretty perfect curve out from there. Collected company. Fascinating. Fascinating. Okay. I think that's higher upside. I think if we, like, play out the... Like, Oriac Champion dies on site to Plague Man, so we're either playing Skoos... Becoming a 5-5, five, five, being shrunk to a 3-4, not really able to block all that well. Um, shrunk to a 3-4 by the last hope activation, right? Because we're main phasing Skoos. So I think we have to just try to get lucky off of a collected company here. But we're getting rocked, my friends. And Coco's a good find. But seems unlikely that it will be enough, even if we stabilize here. I gotta find a way to beat Lily. All right, greatest Coco ever. Tireless Tracker, Skyclave Apparition. Those cards, the Apparition especially, does something. But Tracker is pretty weak right now. I'm just gonna try to trade it with Plague Man if I can. But for now, we definitely Apparition the Flare. Oh, they got a kill spell too. A real strong curve out. A real strong curve out. That's okay. It happens. Huh. It's Trophy though. Opponent just gets to buy this Plague Man back with Lily if they have another land. But if they don't, then we at least tempo them out with this play. And then is it possible that Skoos can stabilize us? It's possible. I think it's possible. Oh, they have another follow-up play? What the heck? What a rock curve out. They love to see it. A second Grim Flare. Okay, that probably kills us, unless we draw maybe like a Path to Exile here. Knight. Well. <laughs> Let's start here. Keep this one. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, but we can't really activate one unless we gain life first. So we can play all three of our cards, but then Scooze is just a two two. So I guess more like it is play just Knight and Scooze, and I guess we're still dead, right? Mostly because of Horizon Canopy. Is this correct? Well, if we just play Knight for these three and then Scooze for two, we gain a life, we go to two. We gain another life, we stay at two. Yeah, we're still just dead to any hit. Uh, 
I guess we kind of have to play all three creatures and gain life and uh, maybe trade Scooz with an illusion or chump block even because it's going to get shrunk by Lily. I, I think we're kind of throwing most of our board away if they all out attack, but um, they'll, they'll lose Grimflare if they do, right? If they have a kill spell, we're dead. All right. Hmm. Tough. I mean, a stellar curve out from the opponent. Good stuff. Uh, on the play... On the play, you know, even though we didn't draw paths there and could have used them, I'm actually a little less high on them, but instead of what? Like, because we know that Plague Engineer now, Oriac Champion is not as, as exciting. They're going to name Human, and it hits Champion, it hits Tracker, and it hits Knight. Uh, but that's just more reason to keep our dorks out of the deck, right? So we can still play another Champion, but I honestly think maybe our configuration is correct as it is. I don't see anything else we need. A Revoker is okay, maybe. Um, but it's also a 2-1 that dies to last hope unless you name her. It's probably not correct to name her because they probably only have one of them. So I think I'm just going to run it back. Look at our value. You know, in, if, unless the opponent not draws us again or we totally fail, I think we should be favored. Um, but we're having to mulligan too much against Rock. That's what they need. And this is an unkeepable hand. Unfortunate. This is a keepable hand. I guess hope they don't have any discard spells, <laughs> which is probably a big thing to ask. But we'll put one of our Valakuts back. We'll play the other. And just don't discard me, bro. But, you know, they probably will. Big Ben, the opponent. Hey, if you watch your channel, shout out to you, or a lot of rock players do. Oh, my God. There it is. There it is. So they know our only card in hand is our only spell in hand is Coco. They have a thought Caesar of brutality that's going to go down right away. We draw Scoos. Okay. I'm going to play it. It's going to give them a tension possibly between doing something about our Coco and doing something about our board. I'll, I'm happy to play any card that we draw. There's a fatal push. There's a treetop village. All right, if they have a thought seize for next turn, I'm going to be very sad. Or a collective brutality. We have a courser. All right, I mean, hey, we're continuing to rip action. I can't really be too mad about that. And we're just going to keep playing the stuff out. In a different world, it would be nice to get a little value out of uh, courser before it hits the field to get the potential to get card advantage by playing a land off the top. Um, there's a Scooz coming off the top. All right, you know, hey, we're gassing out. We're gassing out after a mulligan and some heavy disruption from the opponent. We're gassing out. You love to see it. There's a Liliana. They're taking care of Corsair. All right, um, we are just going to, I think, main phase Coco because we don't want her to tick up, and maybe we'll hit Apparition. I know it's worse against other things, but I think that's our big incentive right now. We find Knight and Reclaimer. Okay. It's honestly not very exciting, but it is still a two-for-one. Honestly not very exciting finds at the moment. Opponent feels like they're having another awesome rock curve out. But can they do everything they need to do this turn? Knight and Reclaimer, on the other hand, are a good tandem. Our, our top decks are super scary. I know they didn't look at last game, or indeed in the game one that we snuck over the line with, but I know they uh, but they are, trust me. <laughs> uh, opponent with the perfect card to pitch to Lily in the form of Inquisition. And they've got a main phase Abrupt Decay. And another Treetop Village. 
by God. By God, it's a rocking. We have a wooded foothills, huh? Okay. Um, actually... Well, no, I'm think I'm sorry. We don't have Dryad, so our Valakut doesn't matter. We only have one land in the graveyard, too, somehow, which is insane, so we can't even attack the Lily off the field. But we can attack her, at least. I think we kind of have to. All right. Very, very bad position for us right now. There's a Goyf. There's a Grim Flare. Holy mother of God. Well, they go up to two. Yes. Luris. They don't need Luris. They don't need that guy. All right. Can we get a can we get a bomb off the top? Dryad. That's a bomb, right? I think so. I think that's a bomb. <clears throat> Are we supposed to get a second Valakut here? I admit I'm this far in the league. I don't know exactly how that works. I think probably yes, right? Sure, I will. I think it's going to work, and I also think it's redundancy. Um, all right. So they have three card types. I want to hit the Lily and the Grim Flare, but if I do it in the wrong order... So I think we need to put the one that hits Lily on the stack first. Because so I think if we... I just don't know how this is programmed in MTGO. Basically, I know that if the one resolves first, killing Grimflayer, that's what we want. If, if it goes in the opposite order, we're in trouble, actually. Because then it just hits the flare with nothing. Um, so... This first triggered ability should, hit Lil, should target Lily... But I, are these already on the stack or not? That's what I can't tell. Because if they're already on the stack, then we want to target Flayer first. If I'm putting them on the stack... Ah, it's the wrong thing. See, I just couldn't even tell. That's so dumb. That's so dumb, dude. Why is that? Why is this? I mean, that's probably just my fault, right? I talked myself out of it. I was thinking you target Lily first, but no, it's the opposite, right? Whatever, we still kind of got to kill the Liliana. But I did these in just the wrong order. It's just... Yeah. Honestly, that probably loses us the game relative to being in a winning position. That is so, so annoying. Because now it's another, now it's a 4 4 clock. Yeah, I can only blame myself, though. And hey, I've gotten away with a couple punts so far. Um, yeah, so just to clarify. With some, with some things, you have to put them on the stack. Like triggered abilities, you have to put them on the stack. Other times, the abilities are already on the stack and you're choosing targets. I've never played with Valakut online before, and to me it wasn't obvious whether those were on the stack or not on the stack yet, right? Um, no attack with Treetop Village. That might be bad news because it means they've got something to do uh, off the top. Um, we're still going to, like, if we untap with both of these creatures, we're still going to do some, 
some work potentially. But if they had no Grim Flayer, the entire texture of the game is much different. Because neither of our creatures can stop him naturally, nor can they stop the Goyf. So we've got to do something else. Um, but I've gotten away with a couple punts here my first time out. I guess if one's going to punish me, it might as well be against good old Rock. And that's not even like a tactical punt. It's just like I couldn't parse the way MTGO is programmed. But, you know, you play this deck a, a few more times, or you get in that situation a few times, I'm sure it's obvious to the onlooker. Oh, interesting. So it was only a land, but no treetop attack anyway. Huh. All right. All right, there's a planes. I guess lands are good, right? I guess lands are pretty good. Okay, we're killing this guy this time. Which we shouldn't have to do. Again, my bad. My bad. My bad. So. <clears throat> I guess we're just doing all, most of this main phase or all of it main phase. I'm really not certain anymore. I'm just going to take actions. My brain is fried from this game uh, and this league in general. But we're having lots of fun. But we're having lots of fun. There's a few different options we could do here, actually. I'm just going to get another Flagstones, I think, to keep the chain going. I'm very much not confident that I'm doing even this optimally. But... Man, this deck is so nuts. <laughs> Alright, so now we have to sit back with Dryad. Um... We're actually a risk losing here. No, we don't. I thought for a second that we that we did, but they, um, if they have a kill spell for Dryad, which would be a disaster, they still can't attack with both treetops, right? And our Dryad blocks the treetops well. So that's number one why we're sitting back. Number two why I did those things main phase, although I had myself confused about it for a second there because we do not risk losing this turn to that, at least, whereas we do maybe lose not being able to fully activate everything to our uh, to the opponent having removal if we wait for it, depending on how the sequencing goes. So, um, our position's great if they brick. They have a goif, not a brick. At all. Annoyingly 6-7, right? Skyclave Apparition, though. That is a card, my friends. What a draw. What a draw. What a draw. Woo! I don't know if we deserve it, but what a draw. <laughs> oh, man.
Sorry about the slow play here. I'm just clicking carefully through everything to make sure I don't mess up here at the very end of everything. Now this one's going to come into play tapped. Um, so we could get like Gavany Township or Ghost Quarter at this point. It would probably be reasonable. Or we could just again keep doing the flagstones thing. I think maybe I'm just going to... Or Horizon Canopy would be fine. I think maybe I'm just getting GQ. Like in case they find an out to Dryad, right? So we can continue trying to win the game in a more old-fashioned way. But they have one turn to find an out. And even then, I think we probably just like GQ their remaining village and uh, attack for lethal, right? Hmm. Hmm. Feel bad about that. Uh, feel a little bit bad about winning despite that misclick or the misunderstanding opponent with an inquisition. Okay. Tried to tell the opponent I don't feel that I deserve the win necessarily, but we do get there. Opponent says GG's anyway, so hey, uh, better sport than maybe I would be in that spot, but hey, um, uh, stumbling, bumbling, four and one. I really wish I had the time to play this before I went to a league with it, I'm not gonna lie, but hey, we do enough to get a four and one, and I don't think with our loss that my play was the issue, but... Let's think about that a little bit more before we declare that, and let's go to our wrap-up. All right, my friends, so the positive resu results continue on the channel, and um, despite me not knowing exactly what I'm doing, I think we found enough good lines to get over the line, and as I was just saying, the um, loss was not much we could do about as far as I can tell. That was the elves' loss. And hey, first time out with a new deck and unfamiliar archetype, the closest thing i played to this before is Frogtown, Golgari Frogtown. Um, so, unfamiliar archetype, first time out, 4 and 1, only loss coming to Elves, one of my favorite decks. You gotta love that. Um, I feel a little less good about beating up on BGX midrange twice. I feel relieved to have squeaked over the line against Blue White Control. And, um, you know, otherwise we are definitely in a spot in the meta where this deck makes a lot of sense, as I said at the beginning. Skyclave Apparition, to me, outside looking in, appears to be the key to the gate. The key that unlocks this deck in its entirety, allowing you to continue going wide, going value mode, playing collected companies, ramping things out, without having to deviate for a card like Path to Exile. Now, we still have paths, but they're in the side. The main deck interaction that White previously lacked is, especially on legs, is here. It is Skyclave Apparition. To me, that pushes this deck over the edge into viability, and it's not even the most powerful card in the deck, or the linchpin, or anything. It's just, like, something the deck probably needed to allow the rest of it to really flex, and to more realistically get to the stage where you are flexing, and, and we did here. Despite me playing imperfectly, we flexed real hard. We had gigantic knights taking him to beat downtown. We had Tireless Tracker making a million clues against Blue White Control. We had a few good moments with Ramanop Excavator. We had some insanity with Dryad of the Elysian Grove. Um, uh, definitely, uh, even though I hate this card, kind of, definitely an MVP uh, alongside Valakut. Flagstones was nutty. Elvish Reclaimer was nutty. The Dorks did us proud, including squeaking us over the line game one against a rock to close out the uh, give us the potential anyway to close out the four and one and frankly scavenging use is really good too uh, good against the mid-range decks and fortunate to open on it against dregs where it stole us game one uh, so um, this the sideboard was uh, by contrast actually pretty unimpressive Oriac champion was okay um, definitely didn't win us any games it played a role against dredge could have kept us in contention in game two but died to plague engineer against uh rock right so and beyond that you know i played paths in times didn't feel that great about them didn't feel that great about most of the sideboard cards frankly i do wonder if we could do something um and, and please this is just me making conversation this is just me giving you my thoughts 
please take that for what it is and nothing more because that was my first time out. I don't know what I'm talking about, but I do wonder if there's a room for one or two utility lands. Found myself wanting to reach for Bajuka Bog, Blast Zone, stuff like that. Lots of situations where you're doing the value thing and you have the ability to tutor lands, but your value thing is not going to win the race. Maybe a Bajuka Bog at instant speed or a Blast Zone could help. Um, other than that... I don't know what else to play. Um, I know that the card Oust sometimes feels as good or better uh, relative to Path to Exile. Maybe this deck is not one of those things, but something to think about. And I just, like, I look at the the, de the sideboard and I see a lot of cards that are just not that powerful. If you say, okay, Path to Exile and Oriac Champion are powerful. I agree with that. Deicide's a medical. Sure. And then what? Knight of Autumn's okay. I don't know if I would call it powerful. It's not a weak card. It's okay. It's decent. Most of these other cards are not very powerful. And that doesn't mean that they can't be the correct call. They can't play a role. But, you know, I went into this league expecting to say, okay, I understand about half of the sideboard immediately. The other half I can certainly make a case for. But I expect it to grow on me throughout the league. It really didn't. And that's not any kind of slight on the list or anything. It's just like either we didn't end up needing them. The main plan is so strong that it just kind of carries the deck and therefore maybe it makes a lot of sense to have relatively narrow cards in there. Or maybe there is a little bit of room to tinker with this, not only with the cards week by week, month by month as the meta changes, but also with the kind of mindset behind the sideboard in general. Just my thinking, my friends, but this was another long league, a fun league, though, you have to say, in most places, and we do, again, escape with a foreign one, uh, taking it to the house against a lot of value-positive decks, where our value is at least as good, if not better, than theirs, right? Um, so I would say, all in all, a, a success, and I could have played more tightly, that is without question, but at least we do get a great result, and again, the only, the only, um, Loss, I don't think, was down to the play at all. So, a good result. Thank you, Tyragon, for this very interesting change of pace for yours truly. It might seem like, okay, you're playing a black, or you're playing black green mid range all the time. What's the difference between playing green white mid range? Is it really that much harder to navigate? Uh, for me, at least, it is just because I've never played a Valakut deck before, I've never played a Dryad deck before. I played a Flagstones deck for the first time ever a few weeks ago with Smallpox. I don't really play Mana Dork decks either. And beyond that, um, a couple of the more esoteric, you know, kind of uh, MT mechanics as they are portrayed on MTGO. Um, trip me up a little bit, okay? They trip me up a little bit, but that's what... Uh, first run out is four Iron Out the Kings. Maybe I'll play it again someday. It's still not my favorite strategy, right? The games can go along. There's a lot of actions. There's a lot of clicking. There's not discard. I love black. I still love Thought Seize, even though we dunked on the Thought Seize decks today. Um, nevertheless, this was a fun change of pace. Thank you again, Tyragon. Thank you out there for watching. Thanks to all Patreon supporters. I think coming up, we've got another different Celesnia Collected Company deck. Maybe you can guess what it is. We also have got to play some Boros Blitz with the new technology, and we have another Jund Shadow, probably featuring Hex Drinker. Maybe some of these leagues I will also be co-playing with the donor. We will have to see whether I can make my schedule work with anybody's for that, but hey, lots of gameplay to come. Thank you again for tuning into this one. I'm sure it was a long league, and I hope you enjoyed it. Don't watch me for expertise on a deck like this, but I hope it was entertaining. And maybe if you're new in, to the deck and learning it alongside me, maybe that was a fun experience too. Anyway, thanks again for watching, and I will talk to you guys soon.